I love looking at all these little, like, the new, this is, oh, that's a cool one, these are cool. Am I before or after Wesley Snipes? After. after. Sorry. <laughs> my coolness, my coolness just goes down by, like, a hundred percent. Because he's the coolest man in the world. It's just the right one. I've never seen Strike Back, so that's Oh, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. So, what can you tell us about your character? Man, uh, so I play Alex Kane, uh, the player. Alex Kane is an ex, uh, he's an ex FBI systems analyst. So, he was the guy who would go in after the Marines or after the SEALs would go into a room and he would analyze the situation, talk to the people that he captured. And he realized in some of the missions that he was on that he was a lot better if he was the guy with the gun. And if he was the guy, thank you. If he was the guy not, uh, not asking the questions, but smashing the door and pulling the trigger. So he kind of goes rogue. He doesn't kind of, he absolutely goes rogue. He opens up a security firm in Vegas, and we find him working on the security firm in Vegas where the pilot starts. And uh, he gets wrapped up in this high concept conspiracy by thwarting and kidnapping that is happening in Vegas. And in doing so, he gets basically totally entangled in uh, Wesley Snipes and uh, Charity Wakefield. He gets involved in their work. Yeah, it's deep. It's got a lot of things going on. So what have you learned about Vegas high-tech security that you didn't know before? I've learned through John Rogers, our writer, that there's a lot of things that are going on out there that we have, you know, we basically have no idea. I've learned to turn my phone off when I go to bed. I've learned to watch my back when I walk into a restaurant. That's scary. Huh? It's just... <laughs> It's incredible. You know, most of it is military-grade stuff. All this stuff, though, we're, I mean, we live in the future. It's incredible. I mean, the fact that this goes straight on the internet, all this stuff is immediately streamable. We did, we sat down at the um, in one of the rooms this morning and we viewed, we viewed the, uh, the, the pilot with everybody. Yeah. And you could see people tweeting and people talking about it live time. And right now it's happening. And I just, it's incredible to me. I came out of a theater background where there was immediate gratification on stage and then you'd walk out and meet the audience. But this is, it's like we're mixing the two worlds again, you know? Yeah. It's like we're doing sort of something on television that has taken three months to make months ago. And then you're also getting the immediate feedback globally as it happens. It's just, it's an incredible medium we're working in. Yeah. It's really cool. With that concept, do you feel like it also brings in uh, smaller press, smaller fan groups? It, it yeah. gives everyone the access to really feel connected with the right. show. You're, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think what's really encouraging about NBC doing this is I think that they have figured that out. You know, after years of a pilot coming out and then it getting canned after one or two episodes, you know, we're obviously keeping our fingers crossed that we get the numbers, but the numbers don't need to be huge nowadays. They just need to be there on, you know, a level that goes, these are fans of the show. Let's keep these people involved. Let's give them what they want because you've been telling us what you want for years now. You want you want 10 hours. You want enough time to get involved in these people's lives, to figure out where they're coming from, and to make kind of assumptions with them as the character goes along in their day-to-day -day lives. You guys have told us that for years, and it's nice that that's happening. And you can also talk about it with your friends in London, your friends in Dubai, you know, your friends all over the world. That's never happened before. So that's, we, I love the fact that this is the reality of the business that we're in. We can discuss this stuff on a global level. And it's cool. Is it always in Las Vegas? Uh, no, actually, I, I was, you know, the premise of the show is Las Vegas. I mean, Las Vegas plays sort of another character in the show because it's this moving, breathing beast that Vegas is. I think there's going to be some episodes, though, where we bounce around the country. I think there's one in Hollywood. I think there's going to be some stuff uh, in the middle of America, you know, in the deserts, maybe in New York. Uh, my buddy Sullivan Stapleton has another NBC show called Blind Spot, so we're hoping for a little crossover. I don't know if we can get that in there, but that would be fun. That would be cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does your character have an adversarial role with uh, Wesley Snipes? Uh, I think the trailer looked like you guys were fighting. Yeah, he kicked my ass a couple times, yeah. He's, uh, so, you know, Alex has, he's got a complicated relationship with Mr. Johnson because of what he thinks Mr. Johnson did. I won't give anything away for the audience that hasn't seen the show, but, you know, Alex has nothing to lose. He's in a place in his life where he has to find answers. He doesn't care how he gets those answers, and he thinks Mr. Johnson is the person who's going to give them to him. So, I think for Alex, it's a, it's a you know, it's a cat and mouse game for him where he's like, I need you, but I also don't like you. So I'm going to figure out how to play that. And as episodes unfold, I think we're going to see those relationships just as we have to. They're going to get bigger and more broad and we're going to see why they need to. Can I get a straight on shot? Thanks. Thanks. Did you do any of your own 
I did, yeah. I was very fortunate. We, a lot of the producers had seen Strike Back. They knew what we were capable of and what we, not only what we were capable of, but what we really wanted to do. And so when we were, we would do some sets, I could see the producers on the back wall picking up their phone and calling, you know, calling Sony and NBC going, we got an actor on a motorbike doing wheelies in an abandoned hallway in a mall. But it's okay, right? This is our right. So we, uh, we got as much, I got to do as much as I was allowed to do. And we're going to keep pushing that boundary. We're going to keep pushing that envelope. We have Michael Bassett, who was the lead director on Strike Back for the last two seasons. We have him coming back uh, to do some of the player. So he knows the formula for making that stuff work. He knows what I like to do as well and what, how far he can push me. And so we're going to just try and grab what Strike Back did really well and throw it in front of a broader audience. And that audience is what NBC allows. You know, they, they give us so much more. So we're excited to kind of really use that to our advantage. Uh, what's the uh, what's the like when he said he looked like he liked that a lot of fun? Yeah. How hard is it to get in the character and play that serious role on, on set? You know, on set, Wesley's very serious. He's very, he's such a great actor. It wasn't hard at all, this is the answer, because he brings his game every take, every time. So, as another actor walking into the room with him, you know the A game's going to be there, and you want to bring your A game because otherwise it'll walk all over you with his acting. He's amazing. And he's, he's a great guy to be in the room with. I had a lot of scenes with him on Charity Wakefield, and the, the sort of the, the three of us together in the space, the, you know, the ensemble vibe that happened was really cool. And I'm, one of the things I'm most excited about in going back to the, the show is working the three of us together and figuring out how that's going to unfold as the series, as the series unfolds around us. Thank you guys for the time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.